Section 8.7 is about solving quadratic systems. In the past, we've had systems of equations that were all linear, but now because we know how to do conic sections, we should be able to find solutions if a line and a conic section are both graphed on the same plane. If that happens, um, these represent the kinds of solutions that we're going to get. We could have no solutions. The line could never touch the conic section. There could be one solution, or there could be two solutions. Here we're asked to solve the system of equations, the bottom equation being a line and the top equation being a conic. Now often it's useful to get a picture of what these two graphs look like so we can at least see how many solutions we are going to expect. Now you can plug this into a graphing calculator, I plugged it into a website, and I found that these, uh, these two equations represent a line and a hyperbola, and so uh, those two are going to intersect in two places. So I know that I'm going to have two solutions here. Now how do I find those two, two solutions? I'm going to use algebra. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom equation and I'm going to solve it for x. So I'm going to subtract 4y from both sides. Negative x equals 3 minus 4y. And then I'm going to divide by negative 1 to get a positive x. Now I'm going to put the 4y in front because negative and negative be a positive, and that's going to go in front, and then a minus 3 in the back. So now I have an isolated variable, and that's going to be useful, because I'm going to take that variable, and I'm going to use substitution into the other equation. Since I know that x equals 4y minus 3, I'm going to take 4y minus 3 and put it in place of the x. Now I'm going to go over here and do that. So 4y minus 3 squared instead of the x squared minus 4y squared equals 9. Now here we have a square of a difference which creates a perfect square trinomial 16y squared minus 2 times 4 times 3 is 24y and then plus 9 that's how that uh, multiplies out and then we still have minus 4y squared equals 9. Uh, collecting like terms that are on the same side 16y squared minus 4y squared gives me a 12y squared. Then I have minus 24y, and if I subtract the 9 and put it over there on the other side, we end up with a 0. Now we know how to solve this. Zero product property says I'm going to take out the 12y, leaving a y minus 2, and then I can set each group equal to 0, each factor, and solve those. So we end up with y equals 0 and y equals 2. Now to find the solution for a system, we need ordered pairs. So I have to take the 0 and the 2, and I have to plug them back in somewhere to find out what the x value is. And the easiest place to do that, I think, is in this equation, the y, x equals 4y minus 3. So I'm going to go here and do that. So I know that this line and this hyperbola intersect in two places at the, the ordered pair negative 3, 0, and at 5, 2. Now in the last slide we had a line and a conic section, but what happens if the two graphs are both conic sections? Here you see some possible solutions there. This doesn't represent all the different um, ways that two conic sections could intersect, but it's a good representation. You could still have no solutions or one, two, three, or even four solutions. Here we have another system to solve. Uh, if you notice, both of these have x squareds and y squareds. So we know that these are both conic sections. Again, it would help me if I had a picture. So you can go to a graphing calculator or a website, type it in. And we find that these two equations are an ellipse and a circle. And they intersect in four places. You can see them here on this, on this picture. So we know we're looking for four solutions. The question is, how do we find that? Now, we don't have an x or a y that isn't squared. So substitution probably isn't going to be the best method here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this minus x squared and I'm going to move it to the left. So I'm going to make this positive x squared on the left plus y squared equals 13. And then I'm going to take the second equation and write it below because this is perfectly set up for me to use elimination. Because if I were to subtract these two equations, my x's would be eliminated. So if I do that, I end up with 1 minus 4 which is negative 3y squared, and I end up with 13 minus 25, which is negative 12. 
Divide both sides by negative 3. So we end up with y squared equals 4. Now when I take the square root of both sides, don't forget you have to include the plus and minus, so we get y equals positive and negative 2. So there's two values for the y here. Now to find the x, I have to take those y values and plug them in. I'm going to plug them back into the second equation. And I've got to plug two of them in. So we'll start with x squared plus 4 times positive 2. We'll solve that. So x squared equals 9. Take the square root of both sides and you get x equals plus and minus 3. When I put in a positive 2. And now I'm going to plug in the negative 2. And because of the way squares work, this negative 2 becomes a 4, just like in the last one, and you end up with the same solutions, plus and minus 3. So now I'm going to write the solutions. Here the x's have to come first, so I'm going to have a negative 3 when I plugged in a 2, and I also have a positive 3x again when I plugged in a 2. Over here I have a negative 3x value when I plugged in a negative 2, and a positive, whoops, a positive 3 when I plugged in a negative 2. So these are the four solutions to this system of equations.